Okay, so now that we completed our trial balance, right, we ended up matching our debits with our credits, right? We got even amount right there. So now we need to do and continue on with the next weeks of um, transactions. So here we are. We're starting on general journal page three, okay? And let's see what happened here on the 8th of June Sunday. So what did we buy? A truck. We bought a truck. So here's the details on that truck, right? We have um, the truck amount, which was a total of uh, $28,900, right? There was tax plus tax of $2,340.90. And of course, there was some documentation fees that added up to $968, okay? We also put a down payment towards the car for $2,987. Okay, it's a random number. So here, let's take a look, because Main Bank of Nevada, account number 12398765, right, approved of us for a three-year loan at 3% interest, okay? Um, and again, um, and the principal and the interest payable due on the 20th of each month, okay? So therefore, um, payment's going to be $849.81. So again, these are numbers that were already pre-figured out, right? Um, if you do know Excel, um, $849.81 is actually correct. If you take a loan, look at the amount that you owe, um, process the 3% interest over three years, and divide it by the number of payments. So again, mm -hmm. there's 36 payments because three years every month of payment. Um, it is approximately $849.81. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, how should we journalize this transaction? Okay, okay. so we buy a truck. We bought a truck. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know, here is paying, you pay, you, you pay 2,927, I say here, it's have to be the tax and the documentation, no? The other, something like that? Uh, in this, oh, no, it's a down payment. It's a down payment, correct. So whether it covered tax or whether it covered whatever it, can, it covered, um, basically the down payment, um, go again goes against the total amount so they're not you're not paying separately for the fees you're paying it all together and this is the down payment mm -hmm. so it's a checking and a truck loan good so first we got we acquired an asset right so we bought a yes. truck right that's what you said in the very beginning what account number is the truck the truck. Let me see. Is seventeen zero ten. Okay. How much is the total value of the truck? Oh, we have to calculate that. Correct. So we have uh, the amount, plus the tax, plus the fee, plus everything. Right, so here it says uh, 30, 32,208. Yeah, hold on. Nine. So what we have here? 28, 900, plus 2, 3, 4, 0, plus... Nine six eight. Yes. Yep. Yep. Thirty two, two zero eight ninety is correct. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And you said you said checking in a truck loan. Okay. Uh huh. Checking, checking for the. 
amount that we pay. Mm -hmm. 2,987. 2,987. And now the rest is going towards the loan, no? That we pay in every... Correct. Now, loan we have... Oh, loan truck is the last one. Mm -hmm. The rest is 2,820. Zero twenty. Twenty-eight zero twenty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, well, it's my total amount of truck here, truck loan. If the whole entire truck was thirty-two two zero eight ninety, and I paid two hundred ninety-eight seven dollars, how much is my truck loan for? So twenty-nine two hundred twenty-one. The total or the the truck loan? That's what you asked. Right? The truck loan, yes. yes. 29,221.90. Good. Awesome. Okay, good. So then, so, go ahead. Oh, we have the description we have to do. Mm -hmm. okay. And let me see. So we say the, we pay a check. We have the check from uh, 1508 to the dealer. Mm -hmm. Robert. Okay, so we have... The dealership is Honest Rob's Auto Dealership. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you down payment from to the, from down payment with a check at fifteen zero eight. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this case, where do I need to go to write that check? To the register. You need to go to the register. So we have the two thousand nine hundred and eighty seven. Mm -hmm. For the dealer Hon Hon Honest uh, Robs. Uh, Okay. Honest Robs, oops, I put Soto dealership. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Okay. okay, Honest Robs Auto Dealership, okay, mm -hmm. for check number 1508. Okay, good. All right. Now we go to the ledger. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got a truck. We got, yeah. Now, oh, wait, one more time, let me check. Okay. So we do the truck first. Truck first, yes, because we want to do it in order. Mm -hmm. So here's the truck. So we have to do the truck. Uh, I don't know what you want to write there. Right, you just bought a truck. That's fine. You can say that the truck cost you twenty eight nine hundred plus um, tax and um, documentation fees. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thirty two thousand two hundred and eight and ninety. Good. Uh, 3220890. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we gotta go to checking. Mm-hmm. Now the checking we uh uh we continue normal or yeah, we didn't mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So when you do the trial balance you don't close anything, you just uh you just continue the like you didn't do anything just to, just to, to verify what you have if you correct have correct you verify as you go through the each scenario right you just double check confirm that you are doing your accounting correctly right because again 
I could transfer numbers from my journal into my ledger incorrectly. I can do a typo, right? Like I told you to make mm -hmm. sure you write 87, not 78. Okay, so mm -hmm. those kind of errors, right? Another thing too is you might skip around and forget to enter in a journal um, or um, in the ledger account. So that could cause, um, you know, um, something wrong in your ledger or in your trial balance. You find out through your trial balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we write there the check-in. We do the checking, so check number. Uh, 1508. Okay. And we go to the credit. Oh, general journal three, excuse me. And we're gonna write a credit because we wrote a checkout, right? We decreased mm -hmm. the money by $2,987. So how much should I have left? How much, how much for... Nine eight. How much? Nine eight seven. Eight. Oh yeah. It is seven thousand two hundred and two point forty two. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. And we're going to the loan now. Truck loan. Yes, we're going to go to the truck loan. So liabilities all the way at the very, very, very bottom of this page is my truck loan. Mm -hmm. All right. We got a business loan, here we are, truck loan. Now this is where you should put all the information in who gave you the truck loan or who approved you the truck loan and um, mm -hmm, you should put it here. So again, Maine Bank of Nevada, Nevada approved the truck loan for three years, okay? 3% 3 3 interest. APR, mm -hmm. and you can even go as far as putting in monthly or payments of, what was it, 849.81 per month, PMT payments, okay, so then so we write the, the amount from the loan, 292219. Okay, so 292219. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so what's after? Uh, so, mm. oh, the, no, we have the, the uh, subsidiary journal. No, Subsi yes, good, subsidiary ledger, because we dealt with uh, with two vendors, right? Yep. Okay, so in this case, let's go ahead and take a look at for Honest Robs. So that should be right under Haley Bros. Nope, that's Higher Temps. Mm -hmm. Honest Robs Auto Shop. So then we have to write the amount totally with the tax and everything. In this case, what it what does the what does the what does the dealership actually do? What did the dealership why did you Okay, so in this case, right, oh, you you, pay down payment. you paid the down payment to the auto dealership, right? But at the end of the uh -huh. day, who who do, who who owes you the money? Or in this case, who who do you owe for the money for the rest of the payments? Do you owe Honest Robs? No, the bank. You owe the bank. That's yeah. correct. So in this case, right, we do need to record that at least we paid two thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars to Honest Rob, and that was just to either pay for taxes, pay for the documentation fees, whatever it is, right? Whatever way you want to justify it, at least you made a down payment for the truck, and that's what you have to record. But from here on out, do you owe Honest Robs? No, you don't. You owe the bank. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then again, I'm going to put down payment, okay, on truck. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I paid using check number 1508. 1508. Okay. 
invoice. There's no invoice number here because you are going to be receiving. Uh, well, you should have an invoice number, right? It, you you purchased a, you purchased the car from Honest Rob, so it should be on the contract that you signed. Um, but in this case, um, I don't have one, so we can skip that part. Now, in this case, post reference was again. Where did you have this in your journal? Yours? Where oh, did uh, page three? Good, page three. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, honest Rob, right? This is where we went in store and we didn't receive a bill. So, in this case, no terms were there, no terms were given. So, we can skip over to invoice amount. Now, once again, because you made a deposit, or in this case, you made a down payment. Whatever amount that you paid for is going to be your invoice amount because that's what you put on the uh, contractual agreement, okay? Mm -hmm. That you paid for this much. So one second, when you ask for the loan, the, so the bank give you the money. Uh, so they supposed to pay the, all the track, no? Because you pay in the bank, you own the money to the bank. Yes. So you pay the, you did pay the, the track, no? Yes, you did pay for the truck, however, did you pay Honest Rob's $32,208? Uh, actually, if you pay the, you ask for a loan for the truck, so they're supposed to give you the amount, the total amount, and you pay to the bank $849. I don't know how to see that. Or, or we just follow the down payment that is in the there. In this case, right, Honest Rob is just a dealership, right? they you you buy from them that's correct however you only cut them a check for two thousand nine hundred and eighty seven dollars right the rest of the money you owe to the bank because the bank is going to pay honest rob for the rest of the truck because they gave you money to pay for the truck right mm -hmm. now you owe the money to the bank oh so that's that so in this case right we're looking at who made a payment to Honest Rob, I only paid two thousand nine hundred eighty-seven dollars. Yeah, the, the bank is gonna pay the yes. remaining twenty-nine two two one ninety, and expect me to make the monthly payments to the bank to pay for the loan I just pulled out. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Yep. So in this case, right, I have to recognize that the amount that I owe was for two ninety-seven yeah. two. Um, thousand nine hundred and eighty seven dollars okay so therefore right if I run the formula once again okay where I have my prepaid okay minus my prepaid minus returns and allowances minus my discounts minus my um, payments right I owe honest Rob zero dollars because that's true right who do I owe yeah. now to the bank I owe to the bank right that I owe to the main bank of Nevada all right and that's where I have to go down to the main bank of Nevada right and enter in that I um, owe them now for any reason you decide to go and take back your car and you know you know sell it back to the dealer obviously the dealer has to buy back your car at a value but you have to take a loss because you already lost you already used the car, right? The minute you drive off the, the parking lot, it depreciates immediately, okay? So by buying back, you're gonna take a huge loss of like a couple thousand dollars, okay? So here you go, Main Bank of Nevada. All right, I received the loan on the 8th to buy my car, so truck loan. Okay, same thing here, three years, 3% interest. APR, um, and you're going to make $849.81 per month payment, okay, which includes the tax and everything in there, all right? So once again, no invoice amount because you haven't received your first bill yet to basically say this is how much you owe. So no terms are there. But your invoice amount 
is for $2,221.90 is because that is what you borrowed from the bank. Okay, oop, I put in prepaid amounts. Not yet. Okay, so not this one. It's supposed to be in this one. So two 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 nine two two one ninety. Okay, because that's what you owe the bank. And every month you're gonna make a monthly payment, so it would slowly decrease your um you don't put oh actually it's a full amount. But you pay eight hundred and forty nine to twentieth. So this this uh the date is not at the Day to do, you don't you don't write this uh, the date you don't need to know. Yes, because oh, in this case, right? Um, in this case, right? Um, I just I just got the I just got the truck loan. I just got the car. When do they usually expect you to start paying? The twentieth of this month or next month? Uh, next, actually, I'm thinking next month. Or yes. Yes, usually they give you 30 days grace period because, you know, you never know, right? You have that 30 days to try out the car, and if you don't like it, you can trade it back and cancel the loan. Uh -huh. So they give, you, they give you time. They don't expect you to start paying right away. They make you so pay the, the month after. After. So the 20th here is going to be on July. Yes, July 20th. Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're done? Yes, we're done with this transaction, yes. Okay, now we still have the 6 8, and okay. we have a purchase order. The thing ceramic, AD ceramic coffee mug. Okay, there you go. Okay, so in this case, right, what is this that I'm buying? The coffee mat. We're buying coffee mats. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're buy eighty of them for two hundred two dollars two forty dollars two dollars and forty five cents each. Okay. Uh -huh. So what do I do with the purchase order? Uh, the, you go into the purchase order to do the to buy the order, no? Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, so get purchase order number number seventeen zero three hundred five. Good. Who did I buy this from? Ceramic. Uh, let me see. Uh, thing ceramic. All things are uh, ceram ceramic PO. Oh, things ceramic. Okay, all things ceramics, good. Mm -hmm. How many coffee mugs did I buy? 80. Okay, and what was my total then? So we have 2.25, it has to be 196. 196, good. Okay. Now in this case, right, there's something different about this purchase order, and what is that? You give it the down payment of one hundred dollars. Exactly. So in this case, this uh, vendor thinks, "Hey, um, if you're going to um, purchase coffee mugs from my store, I want to ensure that you do make a pay you do um, make a down deposit, down payment, and this payment's going to go towards your actual invoice." So in this mm -hmm. case, we have a prepaid account. Remember. Any deposit that goes towards an invoice is going to be treated as a prepaid account. A deposit is where you're going to get your money back. Now, uh, we don't create a purchase here. You, uh, we don't do like we was doing before, like purchase uh, expense uh, mm. unpayable. And the later we put the... Uh, by the way, the not payable, it's final. When you pay in, uh, on... Partial, uh, partial payment, 
So the down payment is going to prepaid account. It doesn't go into the note. Uh, I don't understand the difference between both. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so notes payables where you finance a charge. Where okay. you make monthly payments, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case, this is a struck loan. It's technically it not... In this case, a loan is a separate uh, liability where uh, where notes payable, right? You're just simply financing, um, you know, a small object. It's not technically a loan, and you didn't borrow money. You just are telling the vendor, "I'm going to pay it back slowly." In this case, you borrowed money. You took a loan out to buy a car. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. So that's completely two separate different ideas there. You actually borrowed money to buy a car. Where the other one is, you didn't even borrow money. You just told the vendor, I will make monthly payments. Can you finance it for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the difference. There's one, you're borrowing money. All right, so here, now when you buy um, with down payment, so you use the prepay account. Yes. In this case, yes. Deposits is when you guarantee the money's going to come back to you. And in this case, no, the money's not going to come back to you. It's actually going to go towards the actual invoice. So we have a three kind of account. When you have financial something, it is, uh, uh, how do you call that? Uh, Notes payable. Note payable. Mm -hmm. When you give a down payment, it's a prepaid account, is always. And when the deposit is when the money is going to... You stay with the total amount or, or you take it back no yes when you yes when you give a deposit you're guaranteed that money is going to come back <coughs> can I come back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any account more that it is like that for financial or for payment or for stuff like that say that again we have any other account that is uh, describe uh, any payment or something like that that's long term or something um or just, just three. In this case, we will be looking at um, sales tax payable, accounts payable, um, credit cards, visa payable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's similar but it's <laughs> different. Now, so we do, you don't we don't we don't uh, write the purchase because. Uh, we just write the prepayment account and the dump and the checking. That's all. That's e all what we journalize. Yes, because in this case, right, I'm just simply doing the same thing, right? What does a purchase order do? I'm just ordering the cups, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. There's uh, there's no paint. There's I mean, I'm not. Uh, I, I I didn't buy the cups, right? They didn't send me, mm -hmm. ship me the things. I I'm just it. ordering it. But this time, right, this is considered a customer payment. Or in this case, in our eyes, it's a vendor deposit because they want to ensure that you don't call them and say, I want this many cups. And then next thing you, you go turn around and say, I'm going to cancel the order for the cups. They want to guarantee that you are going to buy the cups and that you're taking it home. That's that's what, that because I, uh, that's what I asked you because the amount is almost uh, is a not, it's half of the amount that you pay more or less. Yes. So yes, in most cases, the, uh, in most cases, a lot of businesses they will require. If it's a large amount, they won't require that much. But if it's a small amount, they want to. They want. They would require at least fifty percent down. Mm -hmm. So in this case, this is exactly 50% down. Well, actually, it's a little more than 50% down. No, 50%, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, my problem is that we just journalized. We didn't write the, 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 the purchase yet. We just write the purchase order like we didn't receive anything. We didn't do right, anything. Right, because we're just simply so we ordering. In this case. We're paying mm -hmm. the down payment that they required us to have to ensure that when we process this order, that they do yeah. not lose any money mm -hmm. if you decide yeah. to cancel. So you're not pay you're not technically paying um, the cups itself, right? They just require you to make a down payment because they just want to ensure that you are you're gonna pay you're that. going to buy it. Yeah, yeah that you're going to receive it and not cancel the order last minute. Mm -hmm. 
So that's uh, uh, Yanu Sabeb, or what we want to do, uh, what we did before when we buy a uh, base, even if you don't pay, or the, well, we didn't give a pay, uh, down payment. So you know how we journalize that. So now it, it, we just reduce the journalize to the amount that we pay, and that's all. And the order, pre, uh, purchase order until we receive. Uh, you, 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 you will you will see what happens when this with oh. this case because I mm -hmm. dealt with the vendor right. I wrote a yeah. check out to all things ceramics. So that means they owe me this amount for all these cups because I agreed mm -hmm. that I was going to make a down payment. So that that's what uh, now you're doing like the the payment they own the money. No, you even if you're doing the order right now. That's how we journalize. Because it's different that we were doing all the time right now. We purchase something, even if we re we receive or not receive, it doesn't matter. We just purchase something, we pay, we didn't pay, or we pay. Mm -hmm. so, that's what we so now it's different. Now you see that you journalize just like they owe you the money. That, uh, that's what I did. Yes, as in like they owe you the service, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's only slightly different. In this case, we must journalize it because we dealt with the vendor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is very similar to Haley Bros, right? We wanted yes. to buy machines from them. They said, hold up, this, that, these machines total up to $3,000. There's no way I'm going to, like, ship you the machine and you decide to change your mind and cancel last minute. No, I want a the down, the down payment in case you call me and say, forget it, I don't need the machine. Because what if they're making the machine right then and there? I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So how am so because I'm making a down payment on these um, cups here? How do I do that? So that that's what I uh, said. I prepaid account one hundred dollar in debit and checking one hundred. Mm -hmm. so because again, I'm making a down payment. I'm not making a deposit. I'm not gonna get the money back. But what I'm doing is that that money that I paid is gonna go towards the actual bill. Okay, so that's what I that's what I tell you before. Uh, that's what I ask you before. Okay. You just journalize that like this, like a, you, uh, like it's a deposit, like it's a money that, that you give them on, 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's all. But so how much did I make this deposit for, da this one, down payment that's for? That's a down payment, uh, $100. Okay. So in the case, if you understand it this way, what I'm essentially doing is I'm buying a voucher, okay? When I buy the voucher and I actually receive a bill, then I redeem my voucher later on so it goes against the bill itself. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so down payment or $100 for the... Or purchase the AD ceramic coffee mag with holder. Okay. Oh, the company. Mm -hmm. The company, right? In this case, what purchase order did I have this on? Oh, a 170305. Okay. What check number did I 15... write? Fifteen zero nine. Okay. So therefore, I need to go to my check register. Mm -hmm. Check fifteen zero nine. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Or a hundred dollars to all things ceramics. Check number fifteen on it. Check on the ledger. Good, we gotta put it on the ledger. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so all things ceramic should be the very first, uh, I'm sorry, uh, prepaid account. Prepaid account, so I gotta go uh, to my assets. Yeah. Eighteen six hundred down. More down. Mm -hmm. Okay, prepaid accounts, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you want to say here? So all things are the same like the all things ceramic purchase order. One seven three zero one seven zero two one seven zero three zero five and check uh, number fifteen zero nine. <coughs> okay. Case number three. And we have a one hundred dollar. Seven nine hundred twenty-six. Seven thousand nine hundred twenty-six. Good. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. What and then what else do I need to do? So the subsidy. What? Well, nope. You got one more account. You skipped. Oh, we have uh, the checking. We got to go to the checking account, yes. So check number. So how much did you have at the in the bank? Seven thousand one hundred two. Good. Alright. Good. Now what's the next account? I mean that what's the next Oh the subsidiary. We gotta update the subsidiary lit. Good. So in this case, subsidiary, right? Um, all things ceramic should be at the very, very top because it's A. Okay, all things ceramics is the A. Okay, so mm -hmm. what do you want to say here? Down pay or down payment. Documents. So purchase order. Seventeen zero three zero five. Seventeen zero three zero five. Okay, you put the purchase order in mm -hmm. the invoice number. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything except the one hundred dollars payment. Mm-hmm. It's a free payment. Oh, yeah, it's a free payment. Mm, in this case, no. It's not. I'll show. I'll show you what. I'll show you what to do when we actually receive our bill. Okay. So go ahead and put it under invoice amount. Okay. okay. And so we made a payment of a hundred dollars. Okay. But, mm -hmm. Okay. Zero dollars. All right. Yep. Okay, so then let's see what else happened next. Okay. So oh, we received from furniture store. What do we have here? The bistro table bill. And table and, uh, chairs. Six thousand six hundred and five. Did we order it before? I don't remember. Yes, we did order this. Yeah. Yes, but we, did we do something like that? No. Well, let's go see. Let's go check our purchase orders. Mm 
Okay, so purchase orders for the bistro tables and chairs, right? Ah. Uh, we didn't do anything. We didn't receive any bill until now. Now we did. Okay, so now we did. Right? Invoice yes. number seventy-five. Seventy-five. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what can we do here? Okay. What did we acquire? Now in this case. They delivered the bistro tables and chairs, right? Mm -hmm. They re they billed us saying, "Hey, you owe me this 6, much six thousand." Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So in this case, right? How do I journalize this? Okay, I what did I buy? The yes, the good the bistro, the bistro and the table one, and the chairs. Okay. Do I have an account for that? I know we have it. Where is it? Here, the thirteen ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you this, I'm not going to pay it now, I'm going to pay it later. So account payable. Accounts payable. Right, because the cost of the asset is going to include everything to make it ready for service, right? So it includes sales tax yes. and delivery charges. So in this case... Okay. Yep. So, how much was the total amount that I owed? Six thousand six hundred five point zero five point zero eight. Sorry. Okay. So six six zero five zero eight. Six zero five zero eight. So we order. No, we didn't order. We received the invoice. We received the invoice. So in this case, we did receive our order. So in this case, we we, we are not going to pay now. We're going to pay later. But we received the items. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So in this case, right? So we receive order. The description, who did we see this bill from? From a uh, furniture store. Furniture store. All right. Furniture store. Invoice. Invoice number. Number 75. Okay. How many days do I have to, to make a payment for? Uh, 15. Okay. And that's all. That's no. it. Mm-hmm. Because we don't need to say that we bought bistro tables and chairs because that's the account that we put it there. We don't need to say that we owe money because we already journalized that we did owe the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this case, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Now we go to the ledger. Go to the ledger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're going to go to our assets and go under furniture. So that's inventory, furniture. Okay, I missed it. The bistro tables yeah. and chairs is right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Account uh, five, uh, six, six, eight. All right. This is where I'm gonna write 10 sets of one table and two chairs. Okay. Um, plus tax and shipping. Shipping. Okay. General Journal 3. And once again, which, how much do I, how much was all the entire tables and chairs? 
All right, six, six, five, oh, eight. And in this case, right, did we pay for it? No. No, we put it on an account. account. So therefore, liabilities. Accounts payable. Accounts payable. Okay, so invoice number 75, general journal number three. And this time we're going to be crediting 660508. So what's my total credit balance? Ten thousand thirty-three point seventy-five. Good, excellent. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do next? The subsidiary uh, journal. Yep, we need to go and update the subsidiary ledger because now we owe this company more money, right? Money. Mm -hmm. So subsidiary ledger, right? This is for furniture store. Furniture so here store. we are, furniture store. We received it on the 8th mm -hmm. of June. Okay, what did we buy? So we have a, a bistro table and two chairs. Okay, invoice number 75, general journal number uh, three. And how many days do we have net. to pay for this? Net 15. Net 15. So, therefore, mm -hmm. when is this bill actually due? Uh, we have uh, 8th, the 23rd. 23rd, good. Mm -hmm. All right, and how much do we owe? Six six zero eight zero five point zero eight. Yes. So in this case, right, if I drag my formula down so that I didn't make any payments to it, I owe an additional six thousand six hundred five dollars and eight cents. So in grand total, I owe um, nine thousand thirty three dollars and seventy five cents to furniture store. So this case track, if I wanted to, I can pay all three bills or I can pay each bill one at a time. Okay. Is it a question or are you tell me? No, 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 I'm telling you. Oh, you can pay a lot. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you see, that's why that's why we have a total at the end because I have the choice. Do I want to pay all of it at once or do I want to make... Everything, yeah. Yeah, or do I want to pay one bill at a time? So we have a Monday 10 now. Yes, and so now we pay $1,000 to Kim Robinson. And this guy, what we would, what we buy from the consultation fee. Ah, this is the designer, no? Mm -hmm. So we journalize that, no? Mm -hmm. Because this time, right, we're we're paying, right? When we received the bill in the first place, where do we put the money? Where do we where do we put? Because uh, we received a bill, right? We didn't pay her. Uh huh. At three, we have three days for to pay. Exactly. So in this case, it is three days later, which is the tenth of June. Mm -hmm. So now we actually have to make a payment. Yeah. So. Account uh, payable, no? It was no. Yes, accounts payable, because that's where we put, we put the um. That's where we put, would that we owe her, right? We placed it in accounts mm -hmm. payable, but what else are we going to be doing here too? The subsidiary ledger, no. We have to. I don't know. Yeah, you can check out. Yeah, okay. No, in this we case, have right? To journalize first, no? Yes, we're gonna journalize uh, first. Yeah. First. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But where, where, so, where did I put that I owe her money? Where? 
Right, we journalized way back when, but in this case, right, I know that I owe her $1,000, right? Yeah. Right, because we have to go check out what um, what bill this was. So in this case, let's take a look at Kim Robinson real quick. We don't need to update it, but we're going to take a look at it. Okay. So here, we're going to go to Kim Robinson, okay, or Robinson Kim in this case, because you put it in alphabetical order. So... Restaurant supplies, here you go, Kim Robinson, okay? So on the 7th, we were billed um, with invoice number 1542, okay? And it says that here that we had three days to pay for the consulting fees on, um, and we have until the 10th of June to make a payment for $1,000, okay? So in this case, right, I have to pay what I owe. So in this case, how do I journalize then I'm gonna make a payment on something that I owe. Accounts payable, no? Accounts payable and what? And then we take it up from the bank. Yep, checking. exactly. So in this case, accounts payable and checking. For how much? For uh, $1,000. $1,000, okay. Now, on uh, design stores, so an F3. We put, we used the account uh, business uh, expense before. Yes, yeah. because remember, we received a bill, but in this case, we're doing a cruel counting. We recognize a business expense has occurred, but we mm -hmm. had the option to either pay or not pay. In this case, we pay. You didn't pay before. Now that the bill is mm -hmm. due, now we need to pay. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. So the transaction that she completed. A business expense has already been in the books. It's It's been there since the 7th of June, right? But now, because I promised Kim that I would pay her in three days, right? Today's the day that I need to pay her. So I do need to pay her for the services because the expense had already occurred. It already happened. Okay, mm -hmm. so in that case, right, I need to write a check out because I paid Miss Kim Robinson. Yes, the check number 1510. Yep, check number 1510. So um, it is June 10 now, okay, for a total of 1000 Okay. To Kim Robinson, good. Okay, so in this case, right, I paid a thousand dollars using fifth check fifteen ten. So in this case, right, what information do I need to write here? Let's think about who I wrote the check out to. Kim Robinson. Kim Robinson. Okay, for what bill? What was the invoice number that I paid? I'm paying off. We have a number invoice. Mm -hmm. Done. We do. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was before. I don't remember. I don't. Okay. Yeah, 1542. 1542 is the invoice number. Good. And then what no, check number did I use to pay? 1510. 1510. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that should be all the information you need because that tells me, okay, I paid Miss Kim Robinson, I paid with the bill that she invo invoiced me for, and I paid using check number 1510, okay, for $1,000, okay? Yes. So now let's go ahead and take a look at um, 
the ledger because I have to update my ledger. Okay. So in this case, right, I made a payment to my accounts payable, so I'm making my accounts payable less, right? So here, I'm going to put yes. the date here. Now, this is the best way of doing it here is that I'm going to put invoice number 1542 because that's the invoice I paid. And I'm going to go ahead and make payment check number check. 1510. Okay. So then that tells me that I actually made a payment. Okay. I used check 1510 to make a payment for invoice number 1542. And we are still on general journal number three. Okay. And this okay. time I'm debiting my accounts payable because I no longer owe Kim Robinson, right? I'm paying Kim Robinson. So therefore I'm decreasing my amount of debt that I owe by a thousand dollars. So in this case, how much do I owe now? 9,033.25. Good, which is all the amounts that we owe to furniture store. Okay. We also need to update our checking account because we just wrote a check out, right? We spent money. We paid somebody. Right. What did who? What do we pay? We paid fifteen, ten. Right. So again, we only put the check number because you can look up your check register here and be able to find out who, how much, and why you paid it. Right. Mm -hmm. We are still journal journal three, and this time we decreased our account once again by a thousand dollars. So therefore, how much do I still have left in my checking account? We have uh, we pay six thousand one hundred and two point twenty two. What? Six thousand. We pay one hundred one thousand dollars. So we have. Uh, oh yes, yeah, six thousand one hundred forty. Okay, okay, perfect. Good. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh -huh. So now we need to go ahead and update our subsidiary ledger, and this is how we make a payment to our subsidiary ledger, okay? Here we're on Kim Robinson, right? Today is now the 10th, okay? Now in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm just gonna put check number 10, uh, 1510. Oh gosh, I keep mm -hmm. putting a zero in between. Okay, 1510. Now, yeah. what invoice did I pay? Uh, 75. What? 75? Actually, no, 75 is the, uh, sorry, it's the this wrong one. Yeah, good. 42. Good. And this time, I made a payment, and I was on my third tra third general journal to make a transaction. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm making a payment, so that has nothing to do with my terms. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go all the way across and say, I made a payment for $1,000, okay? Now, if you put the formula in here, right, which was your invoice minus prepaid minus um, returns minus discounts minus payments, right, it's going to show up that I have a negative $1,000 in there. So in this case, right, what this does is, okay, so I owe the bill, uh, for 1542 was for a thousand dollars and because I made a payment to 1542 for a thousand it shows up as a negative a thousand so in this case at the very bottom in the gray you see that I owe Kim Robinson zero dollars yeah. right where if I erase this right it should say that I hold on oh I suppose I have equal sum here 
equals sum it should say that I owe Kim Robinson a thousand dollars but because I made the payment of a thousand dollars now it shows that I owe her nothing okay so this is how I use the uh, I want you to use the ledger because there's many ways that you can use the ledger I could simply just go ahead and plug in plug in the thousand dollars right here right so instead of putting it there right I still owe a thousand dollars to um, Kim right I could technically put it up here right saying I made a payment for a thousand dollars so then in this case my bill that I owe reflects as zero however the only difference here is you're gonna have to make changes you're gonna have to modify the information adding check number um, 1510 here you have to change the date to be the 10th you have to change uh, you know the journal entry because you put it somewhere else so in this case what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to do that I want you to do it exactly like this because this right here shows me that I had three transactions happen my uh, sorry two transactions that happened my first transaction was me being billed by Kim Robinson the second transaction shows me that I paid Kim Robinson mm -hmm. okay where if I did it all in one I can't tell when I owed I can't tell when I paid and I can't tell etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so in this case mm -hmm. I want you to keep your transactions just as organized like this so then when I look at a transaction I can see what happened right just like how from above in Haley bros right I could see in the first one I made uh, a an accident right and then I fix it the next day sending in a new check for a new amount right that shows me that that keeps my transactions right that I didn't throw I didn't delete anything I kept my transactions and I kept it and I just um, put it in an extra line for the information okay Mm -hmm. Any questions here? No, I think I'm good. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one more transaction and then uh, we can call it a day. So here, last transaction here is National Bank approves of a business credit card. So this is Monday, the, oh no, we're still on the 10th. So, uh, main bank approves of the business credit card visa, okay, for $10,000 limit, all right, 18% um, interest at the end of monthly balances, payments due at the 10th of each month, okay? Okay. So, what do I do with this transaction here? You go to the subsidiary ledger, no? You write that on the bank. Good. Absolutely correct. So let's go to National Bank because it's not the, I applied for a credit card from a different place. So in this case, National Bank credit card right here, National Bank Visa Gold credit card. Mm -hmm. You don't need to put the date, but again, you could put that you, that it was approved on that day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what information would I put in my description here? So we have a credit limit, 10,000 interest, uh, and balance it's payment due by the 10th. I don't know why we can put all of the information. There. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 10,000 credit limit, $10,000, 18% interest APR. Interest. Amount. Amount balance. Mm -hmm. Amount. Okay. And then payment due the tenth. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. On account balance. Okay. Um. Now you could just go ahead and say do date tenth. Tenth. Okay. Now in this case, right? Is there something that I need to put in here, like invoice amount or anything like that? Nope. No. No. Good. Why? We don't have anything yet. We just Correct. Have the... Excellent work. Okay. Excellent, Isabel. We just only got approved of a credit card. The condition of a credit card is 
Yes, we have a credit limit, but did we spend our credit card yet? No. No, we, have, we haven't even spent our credit card yet. All we did was get approved of a credit card. Mm-hmm. We don't even have the credit card, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right? We, we, we open up the mail, and that's all we did. We just have the brand new spanking approved. credit card. So in this case, no journal transaction has happened because we haven't charged our business credit card yet. Anything yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Let me go ahead and let me see what this one is. Okay. So let's go ahead and enter this transaction here in. Okay. And then we'll call it a day. Okay. All right. So that's um, going to be for the... What? No, I don't know if we're going to pay. We received the bill from the... The invoice from the, how do you call that, from the ceramic that we buy. Mm-hmm. Okay, now let's let's read this very carefully. This is going to be, we received um, the ceramic coffee mugs. It is per mm -hmm. periodic weighted average inventory. Okay. That's me. We did the, uh, okay, so that's how we do, how we're doing that. What, what do you mean that? We okay. Can do a, we're gonna do later inventory with uh, because right now it doesn't say anything. No, it doesn't give you any information. It doesn't help you for anything. No. Well, in this case, let's take a look at this transaction. Just go ahead and look at this bill. What is there? What is there that we need to know about this bill? Um. So we purchased, right? We, it's basically outlines that we purchased eighty ceramic coffee mugs at two dollars and forty five cents mm -hmm. each, right? giving us a grand yeah. total of $196, okay? $96. So again, no well, what does it say? Freight charge, freight charge. Freight charge of $100, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? However, it mm -hmm. also says that here that we have a payment for $100. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, this mm -hmm. is periodic inventory. Inventory. Okay. So what does periodic inventory tell you? You have to uh, describe everything that uh, one by, uh, separately. Okay. All right. What accounts are we separating? The freight and the purchase. Okay. So what accounts are we using? The, uh, purchase, uh, purchase expense. Good. Purchase expense. We have a freight too. And freight expense. Okay. And then. And later we pay, so we pay something. Oh, we didn't pay anything, and we didn't pay part of this whole account. Yes, accounts payable. And uh, but we pay one hundred dollars of prepaid account. Good accounts payable, and we have our hundred dollar down payment, right? So now we're gonna redeem our voucher by saying, "I'm gonna apply my voucher." to my bill. So in this case, right, let's go ahead and look up what that um, account number for purchase expenses. is. I believe it's like 6,800. Purchase expenses. 61,000. Purchase expense. Uh -huh. Purchase expenses. Oh, it's 61,000, yep. Okay. 61. One, 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 61. Okay. What was my freight expense? I think that's 60. The freight, it is 6,300. Okay. Accounts payable is 20,000 and prepaid accounts was 18,600. Okay. So in this case, right, how much was my total purchase expense for? For uh, 196. One. 96, okay? How much was my freight? $100. $100, okay? How much was my down payment for? Or my, yeah, down payment for? 100. 100. So therefore, how much do I owe? 96. No. How much do I owe? Oh, we have the... the um... 196 oh. 196 okay so in this case right 
my total amount that I paid for for my coffee mugs was one hundred and ninety six, right? So a hundred dollars goes towards that. So I only owe ninety six, but I got charged freight a hundred dollars. So yeah. now I actually owe a total of a hundred and ninety six. Okay. All right. So again. I didn't make a payment, so what I'm going to do here is I have all the information I need for this. So in this case, who did I receive this bill from? All things ceramic. Mm-hmm. What invoice was this for, or what bill number was this for? One twenty-six. Okay. And when is my? What are my terms? Uh, one percent ten net twenty. One percent ten net thirty. Oh no, thirty 20, or twenty. 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 20. 20. 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Mm -hmm. So with now that I have all this information, right? Let's plug our numbers into our ledger. Okay. Okay. We not supposed to update the purchase order. Okay, good. We can do that. That's definitely. I was gonna wait till the very end for that, but okay. If you want to do that, we could do oh. that now. Okay. So purchase orders, right? All things ceramics, right? We received it. What was my invoice number? One twenty six. One twenty six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So here we're still waiting on our coffee brewer and coffee grinder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into our ledger. So here we finally have periodic inventory, okay? Mm -hmm. So therefore, when do we actually update, if we sell our products, right? When do we actually update our inventory? Uh, what? Uh, when we update the inventory, when we do the direct cost of goods sold. Mm -hmm. If we sell at the end of the at the end of the period, no? Good, excellent, good. So okay, so make sure you keep that in mind because when we do when we start diving into sales, right? It's very important that you keep track of what to record and what not to record. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this case, purchase expense is here. Okay, purchase expense, right? 610. We purchased 80 mugs, 80 coffee mugs, okay? General journal, we're still on page three here. And how much are we going to debit our purchase expense? 196. A hundred and ninety-six. Okay, so that's our very first purchase expense. Purchase. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we purchase eighty mugs, right? And we can even put the um, cost per item if you want to. That is up to you. Okay. We're gonna do the cost of goods sold later. Uh, in this case, we haven't opened our store yet, so we haven't sold anything yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go up to our purchase or our freight expense. Here you go, freight expense. All right? Six ten. We have mm -hmm, for for shipping eight uh, eighty mugs, right? Mm -hmm. General journal number three. Three. Mm -hmm. For a hundred. So therefore, I had to pay a hundred dollars for shipping eighty coffee mugs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then let's see what else do we did. We end up owing on an account, so we go to accounts payable, right? Because in this case, we're not going to make a payment now. We're going to pay it later, right? We have yeah. we have twenty days to make the payment, so. Yeah. June 10, right? Invoice mm -hmm. number 126. Okay. Mm -hmm. General journal three. And now we all, we're we going to owe more money. 
we owe now an additional hundred and ninety six dollars. Ninety six dollars. So in this case, what is my total amount that I owe in my accounts payable account? What's my ending balance? Nine thousand two hundred twenty nine point seven five. Good. All right. Last thing that we have here is we also have to recognize that we made a down payment and we applied it to the invoice. So in this case, we need to zero out that we no longer have that voucher, right? Because we used it. Uh -huh. Okay. So here you go. Accounts pay uh, accounts uh, prepaid accounts. So in this case, we're going to redeem and apply this to the invoice. So again, I'm going to go ahead and write here. Apply down payment to invoice number 126. Okay. Apply down payment to invoice number 126. Okay. General journal number three. Once again, and this time, because we are redeeming our voucher, we no longer owe or they no longer owe us any money because they redeemed it right they said that well we you put it in the credit in the first place so now that i shipped you the items i redeemed that voucher and say that you owe a hundred dollars less now okay so in this case how much is my ending balance in my prepaid accounts so one uh, seven thousand Good. 7826.04. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then now let's go to the subsidiary ledger because this is exactly how we use the subsidiary ledger. So again, we're going to go to all things ceramics because that's the person we dealt with, right? And in this case, today is the 10th, and that's when we received our first bill. Now, this is what I'm going to say received 80 coffee mugs okay invoice invoice number 126. 126 okay general journal number three now this is what i want you to do so the terms what was the terms one percent one one percent ten uh ten twenty ten net twenty okay so then, how, what's my discount due date? What date do I need to pay in order to get the discount? The 18. 18. Mm -hmm. 18, so 10 plus 10? Uh, there is, is 10. Is it 10? Oh, yeah. So we, we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. What day do I have to pay the entire bill? On 20 days, so... Twenty June, June. I have a thirty days, right? Yep. The thirty. So the tenth. The thirtieth. Mm -hmm. The thirtieth of June. Good. Now in this case, right? This is where I want you to pay attention, right? In this case, we did a down payment that was prior to the bill. So therefore, I'm going to enter in that I made a hundred dollar deposit before I received the bill, right? Mm -hmm. But if I didn't make the deposit on the entire bill, right, my amount would have been 196 plus $100 worth of freight, right? right? To give me a total of 296. So this is where the formula comes into play, right? If I started out with 296, my Prepaid amount is going to reduce it by $100. If I returned anything, it will reduce the amount. If I get, or if I receive a discount, it will reduce my amount. And, of course, a payment would reduce my amount. So in this case, I should mm -hmm. owe on my bill, it says it on my bill, that I owe a total of $196. And that's how I want you to use this prepaid accounts section for your um for your subsidiary letter right if you actually made a prepayment right on an item and you apply it to an invoice that's how you do it okay it's not like you um, made a deposit and then you know anything that applies to a bill you would put it there
okay? The discount will down calculate if uh, because we're going to be doing the gross method. Late. Okay. Yeah, so we won't later. recognize later. the discount until later, good. Until later. Mm -hmm. Until we pay. We pay. Okay. Okay. So last thing I want to introduce you is that now that we have periodic inventory, right? We yes. now are going to be introducing you to the fourth worksheet, which is your inventory worksheet. Okay. Yes. So this is where I need inventory to update. Mm-hmm. So in this case, right, I've already filled the information for you for your coffee mugs, okay, that it is periodic inventory and that it's weighted average and what the item is, it is coffee mugs. So in this case, right, we obtained coffee mugs, right? Mm -hmm. We purchased coffee mugs, all right? How many? 80. We purchased 80 for how much per item? Mm -hmm. 240. Five. Good. So again, our purchase expense is going to be um, my quantity times my uh, unit cost, which is gives you 196. How much was my freight? Uh, 100. $100. So then what's my total total cost going to be? Uh, $296. $296. Now in this case, I only have one and one um, batch of inventory for now, okay? Mm -hmm. So in this case, I should calculate my cost per item cost because per item. what if I start selling my batch of items right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, how much is it going to cost me, right? It's going to cost me $3.70. And mm-hmm. Now, again, this is weighted average, so what we can do is we can practice the cost per item if you would like. You don't have to because we're doing weighted average, but there you go. I purchased coffee mugs, and there it is. I'm plugging it in here. I haven't sold anything yet. I haven't returned anything yet. So in this mm -hmm. case, I'm just plugging in that I, that I received inventory, and now I'm plugging it into my inventory worksheet. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Any other questions? No. All right. So I will save the uh, journal here that we're going to do when we come back. We're going to be um, coming back and doing this part right here where we're going to be entering in um, the last transaction for this day. Or in this case, there's two more. So we'll leave off here. All right. We entered in. We use our inventory worksheet. So, all right, no questions then. I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. Um, since there's only you and you work so 